Make sure to use code BANGLE at sign up on FanDuel for a $20 deposit bonus. And check out my second channel for other games coming up like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Call of Duty Black Ops 4. As well as my third channel with collaborations with some of your favorite YouTubers. Let's get into the video. What is going on guys? Bangle getting here. Coming back at you with another video. And today we are back on Madden NFL 19 franchise featuring the Denver Broncos. This is going to be a fantasy style rebuild. Which means anything goes to a degree. Let's go over the roster and uh, let's talk a little bit about John Elway and company. Let's take a look at the roster. And also, Philip Lindsay looks absolutely absolutely ridiculous. He barely fits in the square. <laughs> oh, man. I'm not saying, like, his hair is ridiculous. I'm just saying the way it's proportioned. Uh, yeah, what if, what if a scan? Clearly not scanned, but uh, he just doesn't fit. He's not even centered. <laughs> I guess a lot of them aren't, to be fair. They almost all are not centered. I guess it was done purposefully. I don't know if I like that. Uh, I don't know if I've never noticed it, though. It doesn't really matter. We'll start with the offensive line. Of course, Garrett Bowles, former first-round draft pick. He was drafted at, like, what, 25? So he might be 26, 27 now. He is 26. And, of course, they have Billy Turner, Gino Gradkowski, Connor McGovern, and Jared Veldier. Not a phenomenal offensive line. Jared Veldier used to be great for the Cardinals, but injuries and age have held him back uh, as of late. He is now 31 years old. Connor McGovern uh, played center, I believe, and then moved over to offensive guard. I thought he was a center. Maybe center slash guard at Missouri. Gina Grykowski shouldn't be starting here. Billy Turner, same deal. Garrett Bowles might not even be a reliable play here because just I feel like uh, offensive linemen develop so slowly in Madden for whatever reason. Jeff Hireman is here. Matt Lacoste, former Giant. Jake Butt. Let's go ahead and reorganize the depth chart to not account for injuries here. Since we are jumping in. Forgot almost about Matt Paradis and Ronald Leary. Those are going to be our starters. Paradis is especially a good player. But Emmanuel Sanders is someone that might be on the move. He is 31 years old. I probably am going to want to trade him while I still can get value. We've talked about the regression system before and how overpowered it is in Madden. And he'll be regressing down into the uh, mid and then low 80s within two years. He'll be in the 82 overall in two years, which will suck. Obviously, we have to get better at quarterback. John Elway has run this Denver Broncos team so poorly, in my opinion, because John Elway sees himself as this fantastic talent evaluator at quarterback, and he, it's a miss every single time. Paxton Lynch, Tim Tebow. And instead of taking a quarterback this year, he goes, all right, let's sign Case Keenum, a journeyman quarterback that has played okay. Yeah, he, granted, he did have a good season last year with the Vikings, but he's played okay his most of his career that he's been starting. Kevin Hogan, obviously not a starting caliber. They released Paxton Lynch. We touched on him very briefly. Andy Janovich is a pretty good fullback. And then time for Cortland Sutton is now. He's a really, really good player. Um, <laughs> River Craycraft doesn't even have a picture. Uh, Deshaun Hamilton is decent. We'll see if we can develop him over this first season. I'm probably not going to trade for... Uh, another receiver and then we have Philip Lindsay Rolls-Royce Devonte Booker I like the receiving core I really or excuse me the uh, running back core I really do the running back group is solid on the defense side of the ball it's where things really get good I like Todd Davis I like Brandon Marshall both of these guys have seemingly regressed this past year according to their ratings I don't love playing Bradley Chubb in a 3-4 but it's gonna have to work with he uh with him and Von Miller I should say and then Shane Ray is here Derek Wolf is a beast. Zach Kerr is actually not that bad. Demata Pecco has got to be uh, changed. He's just too old. What is this? Shelby Harris? It is. I didn't even know he was on this team. Doesn't actually look that terrible, but um, probably not going to be a great option for us. And then Adam Gotsis. What? DeAndre Walker? Demarcus Walker. Oh, I'm so stupid, dude. I totally. Oh, wow. Credibility out the window. Uh, in the secondary, Justin Simmons is pretty good. Darian Stewart is on the older side now, so we're probably going to have to move beyond him. It costs so much to upgrade him. He's already slow. We'll see what we can get for him value-wise. And then, as much as I love Chris Harris Jr., it probably is time to move on. He's 29 years old, which means that he is going to start regressing. He's still so good in real life, man. I hate the regression system. Uh, all right, we're just going to have to make some of these moves. Start making decisions and uh, figure out what we want to do. I almost want to change to a 4-3. Play Von Miller at defensive end. Kick Derek Wolf inside the defensive tackle, which he honestly could fit in. 6'5", 285 would be fine for a defensive tackle. 
He is getting into his, what, mid to late 20s, 28 years old. Bradley Chubb would play defensive end. Todd Davis would move to the outside. Uh, Brandon Marshall would stay on the inside. We could start Josie Jewell. I don't know what I want to do. We still have Shaq Barrett. He's not going to be playing in this current system unless he's playing as a rush defensive end in the specialist area, which he's not. He'll most likely just be trade value at this point. Um, is he versatile enough in Madden to play in a 4-3? You know what? He probably is. His own coverage isn't great, but we could continue to play him outside linebacker. I think a 4-3 change is going to be for the best. My first trade is going to be Darian Stewart and Emmanuel Sanders, as well as a fifth-round pick for Levante David. The reasoning behind this is Levante David is one of the best linebackers in the NFL. He is 28, which is at that regression time, uh, which was why I'm trying to trade maybe Chris Harris Jr. and Emmanuel Sanders, as you just saw. But he's already a 95 overall. So if he is going to regress, it's most likely going to be... Well, he will regress. Uh, it's most likely going to be nothing serious, down to maybe a high 80, which will be usable over these... Uh, you know, three or so years that we're going to do. And now I'm in the position to uh, trade one of these outside linebackers, probably Shane Ray. I think he's coming up into a contract year. This trade is going to be Shane Ray, Jeff Hireman for Cheeto B, Awuzie. I always want to say Awuzie, but I think he does say Awuzie. Um, and we just didn't need Hireman. We got, we got the butt, Jake butt. And um, man, this receiving core looks not great without Emmanuel Sanders here. But we're getting better on defense. And as you can see, the addition of a Awuzie probably means that Chris Harris Jr. will be moved. And I'm still trying to do something with this uh, with this linebacking group. Because one of these guys is not staying. Probably. And they don't have a ton of value. I don't even I don't even know what's worth it. I know Todd Davis is younger than Brandon Marshall is. But Brandon Marshall is not super old. He's 28. It costs so much to get him even one skill point. It's twenty six and a half thousand. Uh, well, I mean, we'll see what his value is. Really awesome trade for us: Brandon Marshall, Demata Pecco Senior, and a third round pick for Larry Ogunjobi and Joel Batonio. Gotta love Larry, man. Living like Larry. Shout out to SpongeBob. Rest in peace, the creator of the series. But Larry Ogunjobi is quite an addition. For some reason. One of my favorite players in the league. Like, not like top 10 or anything like that, but like, I love Larry Ogunjobi. I can't even really explain it. It's almost just that his name's Larry, and I think it's funny for some reason, even though it's not, I don't know. Whatever. He's just, he's also a beast. He flies super under the radar. He's a very talented player. So adding him to the team is just fantastic, especially getting a lot younger. Always like that. And then offensively, Joel Batonio is one of the best guards in the NFL. He's also a versatile player, so we could potentially play him at tackle if we wanted to, but I think I'm just going to slide him over to right guard. Or, yeah, I think we're going to play him at right guard. And he's just a very talented player, and he will be protecting our future quarterback, even though I don't know who that is yet, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll find out. All right, boom, huge trade for us. Case Keenum, Tremaine Brock, and a fourth for a one and a two from the Buffalo Bills. I guess the Bills want a quarterback for some reason. I know the trade logic is dumb, but also it is what it is. So I'm taking the picks. And um, Kevin Hogan's our guy this year. Case Keenum wasn't really going to lead us to much. I'd rather have the draft picks that we can maybe turn into some really, really good players. There's always potential for that. We'll have to see, of course. And I think I'm going to hold on to Chris Harris Jr. for now. If he regresses a lot in year one, which he probably will, that's going to be very frustrating to me. But I think this is probably just going to be what the team is. Have to see how that goes. This will be the team for season one. It's a bad team. I think we have started to put some of the pieces together, but this first season should not be good. Defensively, we actually have improved. We've changed systems, and I think the 4-3 is going to fit this group of players better. New starters, obviously, Levante David. Suwa Cravens is playing at strong safety now with Will Parks just behind him. And then a good trio of cornerbacks with Chris Harris Jr., Bradley Roby, and Shadobia Wuzie. Let's go ahead and simulate to the midseason mark. Done with trades. We'll see how this team looks. My guess? Two wins, maybe? We've got Kevin Hogan at quarterback. We're 4-4. Four and four. Interesting. I don't really even know what to say about that. 
The real shame is that this receiving class is so, so bad. The, the, first of all, there are no first round guys even projected, including the top two guys in the second round are fifth round talents. However, at quarterback, it could not be further from uh, the wide receiver area. All of these quarterbacks look pretty awesome. If I had to really watch some guys, it would be Reed Hecker out of Notre Dame, be Joe Roman out of Pitt, Frank Long out of Alabama, Benjamin West out of Stanford. Looks kind of like Andrew Luck in some regards. Well, the only reason I said that was Stanford. Uh, and then, like, kind of the accuracies and the throw power and whatnot. A little bit bigger than Andrew Luck, obviously, if you know anything about Andrew Luck. Cooper Wilkins out of Louisville is great. There are five bona fide, really, really good quarterbacks. And Vinny Kershke out of Oregon is not terrible either. Matt Paradis is a free agent. Or, again, will be at the end of the season. I feel like I say that every single rebuild. I always make that very small mistake. But Matt Paradis, Bradley Roby, let's bring all these guys back. All right, Shaq Barrett, Bradley Roby, Matt Paradis return. Probably not going to bring back Shelby Harris. I probably should have tried to trade him. I kind of forgot that he was a guy on the team, so I didn't. But let's go ahead and simulate to the playoffs, which, surprisingly, we have a decent shot to make with Kevin Hogan at the helm. Odd. So we didn't make the playoffs. Finished 6 and 10. That's honestly more like it, which is odd. Let's see the, the stats. See how this happened. Kevin Hogan, not a bad year, honestly, for Kevin Hogan. 3,700 yards, 27 touchdowns, 15 interceptions, rushing. Philip Lindsay was not very good, in my opinion, but Royce Freeman was exceptional in his uh, touches. Receiving, Deshaun Hamilton was all right. I mean, that's a pretty good season, honestly. And then Cortland Sutton was great. Eight touchdowns over 1,000 yards. Jake Butt, River Craycraft contributed. Pretty pretty good uh, group there. Not going to lie. Blocking. Offensive line held together pretty well. I like to see that. And then um, kind of weird from the total tackles front. Shaq Barrett, Levante David both lead uh, with 98 apiece. And then Justin Simmons had 91. A lot of tackles all over the place. Tackles for loss, 14 from Derek Wolf, 13 from Von Miller, 12 from Larry Ogunjobi going down by one each time. Levante David had 11. And then quarterback sacks, Von Miller only had 12 and a half, but that's still a pretty good season. I mean, I say only 12 and a half. That's, that's a pretty good number. Eight for Shaq Barrett, six for Larry Ogunjobi, five for Derek Wolf. And then interceptions, uh, nobody had more than one. No Chris Harris Jr. in there. You hate to see that. Weird defensive numbers. Nobody had more than one forced fumble or fumble recoveries. And then I doubt we're going to see a defensive touchdown. We don't see any. Let's go ahead and check out awards. We might have to change up the offense and the defense. Drew Brees wins MVP of the 10-4-2 Saints. Doubt we're going to see any Broncos in here anywhere. But Case Keenum is in the top 10. Unreal. AFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Marcus Mariota. Kind of a weird one. Uh, and then no Broncos. Defensive Player of the Year, Miles Jack. No Broncos. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Sam Darnold of the 7-9 Jets, Broncos, Philip Lindsay at number six, or should be at number three of the six and ten Broncos, Cortland Sutton number four. Bunch of Broncos, Deshaun Hamilton, Royce Freeman, River Craycraft. We played so many. Uh, and then defensive rookie there goes to Mika Fitzpatrick. The Dolphins went 114 and one. The Dolphins won one game. And then no Chubb in there. No Bradley Chubb. Uh it's annoying. So I guess we have Aaron Lynch. I don't even remember picking him up because I didn't. I guess the CBU did. Chad Kelly. <laughs> didn't even mention him when talking about quarterbacks. Jared Veldier uh, regressed five overall. That's pretty significant. And uh, as you can't see in the top left, but the Jaguars this year actually won the Super Bowl over the Rams. 42-36 was the final. Uh, weird one. The Rams ex haven't exactly been great this year. I don't know if you guys follow football. So, HaHa -Ha Clinton Dix is a free agent. He can play strong safety for us very easily. The Redskins are trying to retain him. We have Suwa Cravens right now, and I definitely wouldn't replace uh, Justin Simmons. Suwa Cravens is a 78 overall, only 24 years old. He was a former Redskin, fun fact. He's about to be a 79 overall, or should be. It looks like he should have earned his skill point. He has enough points, but he didn't get one for some reason. 
I don't know, man. He feels like a replaceable player that we can trade. I'm not going to overplay or overpay for Clinton Dix. But it's just such a funny name. I might have to. Get it? Haha. -ha. Some of my best work. Clinton Dix rejected the contract. I wasn't going to overpay for him with what we have right now. So the Redskins were giving him, like I swear, like $10 million per year. And I, I just there was no way I was going to match. I wonder if we can see his exact details. He went to the Dolphins. 42.6 over 4. And that's just base salary. At nearly a $17 million signing bonus. That's $60 million over 4. For HaHa -Ha Clinton Dix. That's a pretty big contract. This really is the best quarterback class I've ever seen. And there's no reason for me to trade up when I can pretty much have my pick of the litter. I don't need Reed Hecker, even though he is pretty good. So we're just going to simulate to pick eight. See who's on the board. Assume he's going to be off as Lamar Forrest goes to the Chargers out of Louisville. They finally get a great interior presence. And Reed Hecker's still on the board. Interesting. I think Benjamin West is the best quarterback on the board, all things considered. 23 years old. How old is Hecker? If he's like 21, I might have to. It's only an age of a, or only a one-year difference of age. We're going Benjamin West out of Stanford. Welcome to the Denver Broncos. 79 overall, quick development. 90 throw power. Ugh, was hoping that'd be higher in the A- minus range, but very accurate. 79 deep, 87 medium, 91 short. He's a decent player. He'll be our quarterback of the future, and I like how he's wearing number seven. Hmm, can we think of any other Broncos quarterbacks who might have worn number seven? None come to mind. All right, our second first-round pick here. Reed Hecker is still on the board. I know it's kind of weird considering the group that we have now, but I am going to be taking a running back here. Damian Strait out of Georgia. Really, really like what he brings to the table. Great top three skills. Very athletic. Great 40 time and bench press. I think he's going to compliment Philip Lindsay really well. I don't need Royce Freeman if Damian Strait is as good as he looks. So welcome to the Denver Broncos. 79 overall, quick development. 89 speed, 87 trucking. Is he wearing a number in the 70s? I hope, yeah, no, 32. Thank God, it looks like 72 almost <laughs> in that shot. Uh, but he is very good. Has a fight for yards trait. Fits the scheme. He's definitely a guy I want to work into the offense. What just happened? All right. Reed Hacker is still on the board. The only reason I took a running back is there's nothing here that, like, is even usable, in my opinion. Like, Cal Nicholas is pretty good. I'll likely take him with my next pick. I'm going quarterback here. I'm going Reed Hecker. Quarterback battle. 77 overall normal. So we definitely made the right decision at first. Even though they're, they're very comparable, in my opinion. Maybe Reed Hecker will be a trade piece for us. Not a terrible player. Just, uh, we had to take the shot, man. If he had superstar dev or was in, like, an 80-something overall, it was worth the risk, which was essentially no risk. All right, Cal Nicholas still here. Wish he was stronger, but he does have good top three skills. Should work in really nicely at right tackle for me. 75 overall. He's Jared Veldier, but instead of 31, he's 21. And we don't have Jared Veldier anymore, obviously. He can't pass block at all. Uh, but he'll play right tackle. Wow, it's a fifth round. And the Chargers just drafted an edge player, Darius Haynes out of Nevada, and he's a 77 overall. What a fantastic fifth rounder. All right, Jason Whitaker out of Penn State. Add to the Penn State youth at the receiving core with Deshaun Hamilton. Welcome to the team, Jason Whitaker. 75 overall. Really good value on this pick for sure. Now, he's not the best deep route runner. You know who this player is? This is DeMar Jacobs, if you guys watch my Giants franchise. Uh, where we actually play all the games. Check it out if you haven't already. Same with Ozark State Dynasty in NCAA if you're in a college, which is awesome to me. I'm more excited. I tweeted out about this on my Twitter link in the description. But I tweeted out, whoa, that I'm more excited this year for college bowl games and the college football playoff than the NFL playoffs, which I don't know why, but I'm just that's just how I feel this year. And that's a guy, here's a guy, who can potentially play tight end for us something to think about all right i have really no knowledge of these players or they're terrible at this point 
This is a round one projected running back who's dropped all the way to the sixth round. He looks terrible. Here's Curtis Sherry. We'll draft him. 71. Good value for the pick, but he's not going to play. Uh, I am done with the draft. Draft recap. We did pretty well. Bunch of high 70s players. A few mid -high, mid 70s. I wish you could sort by position. That's my wish. But I do want to see all these quarterbacks and, of course, the highest overall players in the class. Highest was only an 81. A lot of times it gets a lot higher. Like, a lot higher. The top was Vinny Kershke. 80 overall quick development. I don't really like 88 throw power, though, and he's very slow. Even though he's the highest overall, um, wouldn't be my pick, so I'm glad we didn't take him. Benjamin West, we did take. Uh, Alan Wilbur is a 79 overall with quick. So right in the same market where we are. He is, uh, still, I don't like 89 throw power, man. I know like, I know it seems like only a small boost to 90. So I, I don't really want Alan Wilbur as much. Cooper Wilkins, how good are you? Superstar Dev, you are automatically the pick out of Louisville. Yeah, 90 throw power. He's exactly like our quarterback, except younger and with superstar development. He would have been the pick. But there were so many of them, man. It was, uh, it was hard to tell. It really was. Joe Roman was another guy. Superstar Dev, 23 years old. Ooh, I almost like him the best, even though he is 23, which means it costs more XP to upgrade him. Yeah, he, he's really good as well. I think we got some good options at QB. Just, ah, that Superstar Dev is so impactful if you get it. This trade, we're trading for Michael Pierce. Reed Hecker, Royce Freeman, who we no longer need. Rolls Royce, rip. And a second round pick for Michael Pierce the Baltimore Ravens, they, they were the only team with double green interest on um, the quarterback and the running back in Hecker and Freeman, respectively. So it made the most sense to trade with them, get the most value, and we do need to sign a backup quarterback. Oh, hell yeah. How about not only a backup quarterback, how about a third string? Maybe these guys will be good. I don't even know if... The, I don't even know what their deal is. Welcome to the Broncos, Paxton Lynch and Chad Kelly. Hope you like it here. Boom! How about that for a trade? Derek Wolf's contract is awful, and he's now a third-string defensive tackle. His cap hit was almost $10 million per year, by the way. Will Parks and a first-round pick next year. I know that's a lot, but we have the Gronk. We have Gronk now. Rob Gronkowski is going to be our tight end. And uh, I'm sure he will add a lot to this offense. Give West a true target. Because right now, Cortland Sutton and um, Jason Whitaker, probably not the best group, he, you know, he's ever had. I mean, it, I guess it would be probably the best group of overall talent. But it's not the best possible group by a long shot. And it's been a while since I've traded for a true superstar. It's a fun one. Also, Chris Harris only regressed by one overall. Well, I mean, we did upgrade him, but overall, hasn't dropped very much. So I'm glad I held on to him. Took the risk, and it paid off. Time to simulate now to the midseason mark, and we'll see what this Broncos offense can do. Also, I changed the multiple zone run, because it fits Philip Lindsay a bit better, and it also impacts so many more starters. So now we're going to continue simulating. Gronk's an impending free agent. That's fine. We'll re-sign him. I know he's 30, but he's also a 97 overall. We're going to be fine. 5-3 and three at the midseason mark, coming off a loss to the Raiders that we did not need. Would have put us at 6-2 and two with a win, and the Raiders only had one at the time. Uh, I don't know how we let that happen. So, Gronk, Chris Harris Jr., Justin Simmons, Suak Cravens, all impending free agents. Going to have to bring them all back. All four have re-signed. It's good to... Uh, Extend these guys, two youngins, two older fellas, but all very important to the team. Can't even negotiate with Andy Janovich yet, which is all right. We're on the path to the playoffs. Five and three, second in the West. In good position for a wild card uh, matchup if we don't take the division two. So simulate to the playoffs. Let's bring it home. Rookie quarterback, playoff time in Denver. Come on. All right, I don't. It's not playoff time. We lost to the Chargers last week, 
Finished 8-8. Eight and eight. The Chiefs passed us. Come on, man. Come on, man. Benjamin West. Uh, great season. 4,100 yards, 35 touchdowns, only 9 picks. Phillip Lindsay was not great. Damien Strait was pretty good. Weird how the backup running back is just outperforming the main RB with so many yards per carry. Better. Gronk led our team in catches. He was pretty great. 963 yards, 6 TDs. Cortland Sutton, what a season. 1,100 yards, 7 TDs on 86 catches. Jason Whitaker was all right. Good red zone threat. And Deshaun Hamilton had a great year as well. Uh, our offense looks to be pretty good besides not having a running back. Philip Lindsay's just not playing well. Not much else you can say about it. Levante David, pretty good season. A lot of tackles, good tackles for lost numbers. And Von Miller stepped up again. Better year from him this year. 15 tackles for loss. Chubb had 14. Bradley Chubb also had 9.5 sacks. Larry Ogunjobi with 8. And of course, Von Miller led the team with 14.5. Hold on, we have more sacks I didn't see. Michael Pierce also at 8. And Shaq Barrett had 7 coming off that right outside linebacker. And Chris Harris Jr. had 6 picks after having 0 last year. Awesome bounce back year. How do we only win 8 games? Seems like everyone is playing well. Bradley Chubb even had a safety, and we have a defensive touchdown from Chris Harris Jr. Having arguably his best year at this age. Drew Brees, 15-1 with the Saints. Great year for him, winning MVP. No Broncos, really? Offensive player of the year goes to Le'Veon Bell. Benjamin West at number seven. He should have been in that MVP conversation. Miles Jack wins back-to-back -back defensive player of the years for the AFC. Is up to a 99 overall now. Levante David at number 9. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Benjamin West. Love to see that. We also have Jason Whitaker and Damian Strait in here. Curtis Sherry at number 10. Another wide out. And then the Jags get Maurice Roberts to win Defensive Rookie of the Year. So their defense was balling. And of course, no Broncos. I don't remember playing one. Playing a rookie. So Benjamin West only has two skill points. He got nearly nothing for Offensive Rookie of the Year and didn't get his development upgraded to star, which is super disappointing. Looks like Adam Gotsis is a top free agent as the Rams win back-to-back -back Super Bowls. Uh, actually, did the Jags win last one? I know they were in it. I don't remember what happened. Anyway, the Rams win this one 34-20 over the Chargers from our own division as they are dominant year in and year out. This is the team, though. It looks pretty good. Spots I want to improve on. Uh, Obviously, tackle, now guard. Ronald Leary has regressed a lot. Wide receiver, of course, and then middle linebacker. The rest of the defense, I think, is great. Todd Davis is not doing it for me. He just isn't. I need to see a good receiver in free agency. I know you're saying, oh, you have receiver problems, but you had uh, Emmanuel Sanders. Well, that's true, but trust me. He's down to an 84 now, and he's 33. I don't want it. I do. Want Devontae Parker as two AFC East teams are going after the former Dolphin. Add me to the list. We got Devontae Parker, Matthew Judon accepted. I didn't offer him a lot of money. Devontae Parker really makes this receiving core a lot better. It's crazy what 185 overall receiver will do, especially with uh, his potential to develop, you know, probably close to a 90. And then defensively, I just thought that he could probably fit in well, maybe replace Shaq Barrett or kick Devontae David inside the middle linebacker. I really would have liked that. And there is regression here. Levante David down to a 91, but I think that's still quite serviceable. Uh, and then it offensively, Gronk is down to a 93, but it's a 93. It's not... It's not bad. Not bad. I wish I could have a 93 at every position right now. Time for the draft, though. Giants have the number one overall pick. They took whoever they picked. And uh, we're on the clock at number 19. Cameron Corp, cornerback out of LSU, joins their corner core of the Texans. That's a lot of C's. Derrick Henry, who is close to 6'4", 233, has decided to go back to school, this time at Tennessee. I think he probably does have one year left of NCAA eligibility, and he's a quarterback now. And he's pretty good. A lot slower, though. Wow, a lot of great linebacker options. Love it. Wow, look at these studs here at the top of the draft. Oh, oh yeah. 461 is just it's a slow receiver. 424? Alright, and he's Penn State. I'm sold. Add another Penn State receiver to the mix. 79 overall. Of course he's gonna be quick development. He's fast as hell. 98 speed. 
Talk about a slot weapon. Tyrone Myers. Tyron, he has two ends. I don't like Tyron, Tyrone. There's a first round talent quarterback here. In the third round. What are my what are my options? I have nothing on my draft board. Let's take him, dude. Rashard Bailey. At the very worst, he's trade bait. 77 overall. Good pick for the class. We also needed a backup. 87 speed. Doesn't throw very well. He's like... He's a running quarterback. Very clearly. Let's take Gary Helfit out of Alabama. Looks pretty good. Versatile outside linebacker, in my opinion. And he is a 74 overall. Rank number 68. We took him at 115. Um... It's a good backup. I probably won't try to force him into the lineup, tell you that much. Let's go Julian Terry out of Michigan. Looks like great value for the pick here. And he is a 73 overall. It's a good pick. And uh, if he had better development, I actually... And of course, he's not going to wear number 58. Uh, if he had better development, I probably would play him. I think he has pretty decent speed, tackle, block, shit, hit power, pursuit, acceleration, all pretty good. His coverage is not great. But he does look like a pretty good player. I just think the development and being 23 years old is probably going to hurt him. And the reason that um, we're not going to work him into the lineup. Let's see who the best player in this class was. Top guys were near 80. 82 overall right tackle. He was picked before we picked, but this would have been nice to add him. Eric Desir, all picked before we finally got on the clock. Even Oscar Hoskins was. Derrick Henry was always pretty good. Warren Thompson, we don't need a quarterback or a running back, even though I drafted one. I think we got the best pick that we could have had, given our needs. So I am actually really pleased with that. I want to check out the other wide receiver. Was it Will Fenderson? I think it was. Yeah. I'm, I'm more happy with our selection. This is the squad. It's worth peeking into free agency for a minute, seeing if there's any value here that we could add. Uh, Emmanuel Sanders. I don't really want him. Yeah. Not much here. All right, season three, I believe now. Yeah, season three. I think we've put together a good team. 87 offense, 91 defense, which is 86 overall. I'm actually not sure as Bradley Chubb jumps up to a 91 overall. Pretty good. Um, and he has superstar development now. Because he had star previously. Doesn't say how he got it. Um, what did I want to say? We need to get better. It's a good team. Oh, yeah. I don't think I have a punter. Yeah, Brandon McManus probably shouldn't be doing both. I'm sure we'll be able to sign a decent one in free agency in the uh, mid-70s is really all I'm looking for. And uh, there he is, Riley Dixon, former Denver Bronco, who was replaced by Marquette King. Speaking of which, where is Marquette King? How did I lose him? Whatever. Mid-season time. I love how my coach kind of looks like former Broncos head coach Gary Kubiak. A little bit. Or not head coach. He's a coordinator. I think he's Texans head coach. Did he? I don't think he was ever the head coach for the Broncos. Oh, no, he was the Broncos head coach for two years. All right. He also was their offensive coordinator. Um, but yeah, all right. I thought I wasn't crazy. He's now the senior personnel advisor in Denver. So he's still there. Yeah, I'm looking at him right now. It, it looks like a man. It's funny. It's funny. Oh, Levante David, panning free agent. We are 4-4. Four and four. This is a way better team than we went 4-4 four and four with last year. What is going on? Levante David, Larry Ogan, Joby, Philip Lindsay, Chidobi Awuzie, Brandon McManus, Garrett Bowles, Jake Butt, Todd Davis, Ronald Leary, Demarcus Walker, all free agents. I... Ugh. Garrett Bowles, for me, at this point, is a right tackle. I'd like to kick him over. He's developed, like, not even at all. He's gone up one overall over the course of these three years. I don't think I want to bring back Jake Butt. Nah, I do. He's a good backup tight end. I don't think I want to bring back Todd Davis, so Ronald Leary we need to improve on. Demarcus Walker doesn't really matter. Shadobi Awusi is wearing number 24. I'm low-key triggered at that. Champ Bailey, my second favorite player in NFL history. He's number 24 for the Broncos. We've re-signed all these top guys. Bren McManus needs to come back. Jake Butt. I'm mixed on Garrett Poles, dude. I am. 
All right, I re-signed all these guys from Jake Butt all the way to the top. From the Butt, past Larry to Levante David. I, I hate how offensive linemen don't develop. It's every single time. He fits the scheme. He's getting the most XP possible. I have the offensive line multiplier, and they just don't they don't get better. Ooh, we made the playoffs. Nine and seven. Got to face the Browns, though. That's honestly a tough matchup. Chargers went 11 and five. They're coming off a 24-14 loss to the Patriots. But here we go. Benjamin West, pretty good year. Not a lot of touchdown passes, but good numbers overall. Philip Lindsay was okay. The yards per carry at 3.5 is way too low. 3.6 is barely better. <laughs> and both Cortland Sutton and Tyrell Myers, who I hope to God won Rookie of the Year with those numbers, both with 1,030 yards. Weird. Gronk was good, too. Touchdowns just aren't that high. And then blocking the offensive line was uh, not fantastic. Defensively, a lot of tackles for Levante David, tackles for loss. 16 for Von Miller led the team as he had another double-digit sack season. 12 tackles for loss for Bradley Chubb and Larry Ogunjobi as well. Uh, no one else was over six sacks. Bradley Chubb had it. And then Jadobi Awuzie had four picks. Pretty good. Force fumbles. Uh, no one with anything crazy. A safety for Von Miller. And somebody had two defensive touchdowns. It's Chadobi Awuzie. I like to see that. Awards. Kareem Hunt wins MVP. Followed by... Four running backs, or well, he's followed by three, but four running backs in the top four for MVP with Blake Bortles at six. Interesting. AFC Offensive Player of the Year, Kareem Hunt. We get Benjamin West at eight. Defense Player of the Year, Miles Garrett. Levante David at number six. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Nathan Dreesen. Not Tyrone Myers. You guys might remember uh, Joel Dreesen if you're Broncos fans. I think he spells his name the same way. Come on, Tyrone or Tyron. I haven't decided. And then Marvin Goddard wins it for the Dolphins. Relative, perhaps, of Ozark State quarterback Pedro Goddard. You guys keep up with that series. It's one of my favorites to record. I'm having a blast with that right now. But we are a playoff team. Let's go ahead and upgrade the boys. West is developing so slowly. This is the group. The offensive line is not tremendous, but it's okay. I like the offense. It's not awful. Tyron Myers up to an 83 overall. Defensively, I mean, we got 91 offense, 93 defense. It's a pretty good team. There are no real standouts um, in uh, the rest of the team besides the defensive line where it's clearly incredible. But what's the average overall here? Like 94? 93 maybe? I mean, we can find out. I'm not really a math guy. Average is 94 and a half. Wow. Um, it's a pretty good uh, median overall for the uh, defensive line. Not too bad. But all right. Wild card game at First Energy in Cleveland. Let's go. Broncos, 88 overall. Much better than the Browns. Let's beat them. Up 7-0 early. Now tied at 7. I don't really feel like jumping in unless we have to. Um, I guess we settle for a field goal there. We got to get better. We got to get better at converting. 13 to 7, only up by uh, about a touchdown. Of course, only six points opposed to seven. But it's field goals telling the story of this game. Brandon McManus leading us to victory. And now it's 16 14. Let's go ahead and kill clock. Ooh, blitz off that right side. This will be an easy dump off to the running back, Philip Lindsay. That's actually the perfect spot. Picking up 14. Making a third down and one. Should be able to get this pretty easily. And there it is. First down. That should do it. Just about. Shout out to Hugh Jackson. <laughs> Go Browns. That is ball game. Philip Lindsay rips off like a 15-yard carry or so. Pretty good game for us. And we're going to walk out of here with the win. 16-14. Close one over the Browns. A little bit worried about this one. The Chargers are so overpowered in Madden Sim. It's not even funny. We're a better overall, and we had a significantly worse record in my... I know it's, what, what two wins? It was 11 versus 9. And we have very similar schedules. <laughs> Obviously, being in the same division. It's just that we're going to get crushed. 
I already know it. 21-3. to 28-3. Um, we better get on some New England Patriots over the Falcons stuff right now, or we're going to lose. I think we're going to lose. I'm telling you. We're getting crushed. There we go. Look at that speed. 98 speed. Pretty good. It's going to be really tough to win this game. Dare I say impossible. 38-10. It's over. 45-10. Uh, I told you we are going to get smashed. Chargers are so overpowered. Phillip Rivers threw for 387 and five touchdowns. He missed one throw. How is this not a perfect QBR of 158.3? He missed one throw. That's that's an that's one of the best games I've ever seen for any quarterback ever. We don't really need to re-sign anybody else. I already took care of that. So we can just go ahead and move on. I'm fine without Riley Dixon for right now. I'm fine to just move on for a minute. Go to free agency, draft a stud. Head back stronger than ever for season number four. Trent Williams is in free agency. This is a must sign. I will give you money. We have it. We need you. You're going to regress, but that's fine. We need you for... Uh... Oh, the Redskins are going... Oh, God. I'm not going to do that. Ooh, did Chris Harris retire? Hold on. Did he retire or did he regress a lot? He's down to an 82. He's down to an 82. Uh, what happened to Chris Harris? You, uh, minus 28. Uh, that hurts. We got Matt Milano. Trent Williams rejected because he's just in it for the money. Uh, we have no left guard. The tackle situation, not great, but we do have a new middle linebacker. And that's what Matt Milano is going to do. Or... Nah, we're, we're going to play Matt Milano at middle linebacker. We do not have a first-round pick. Because we traded it to get Gronk. So, not that, I mean, I, I, we just got to go offensive line and hope we get a stud. There were so many good quarterbacks in this, uh, this franchise. Ooh, you know what? Howard Hendricks looks good, besides the fact that he ran a 4-7-40 just about. Danny Malden looks pretty good, except he ran a 4-7. How do you guys, how are you even eligible to be drafted with those 40 times at cornerback? Sir Darius Reynolds looks all right. Um, we're going to take Tremont Boone here. Doesn't I don't know if he fits his name based on appearance, but all right, Tremont. Uh, yeah, this, this is rough. Anthony Stashileski. Need a better mustache to go with his name. Uh, I needed like a 78. Well, I mean... Ah, ah, I'm done. The number one overall pick is a 74 overall. He has star development, to be fair. But I don't think you want a 74 overall picking at number one. 83 overall was the top of this class. It seems like it's gotten better as it's gone down. Or, you know, this franchise has played out. But, uh, yeah. There are some pretty good players here. Demarcus Tarpley, 80 overall out of Texas. Hook them horns. Um, yeah, I don't know. We just didn't have a pick to make anything happen. Might be signing James White just to trade him. Might do an old sign and trade. I don't know if I, I, it's been a while since I've done anything like this in a, in a rebuild, but I'm kind of about it. All right, James White, a fourth and a seventh for Trey Turner. My favorite. Screwing over the CPU. Gotta love it. He'll play left guard. Jason Whitaker in a third for Ali Marpet. It's going to help improve our offensive line. And um, I don't know how we're going to do it because now we have obviously many guards. Ali Marpet's a guy that can play center also, which means that for me, he's going to play uh, right guard and not tackle. And Joel Batonio, who played tackle at Nevada, is going to play tackle here again. And he will be... He'll be the right tackle. I don't really feel like moving Garrett Bowles to 
to uh to left tackle. There's only one extra step or to right tackle, but I don't I don't feel like doing it. All right, the offensive line's a lot better now. Receiving core is nice. Got a decent backfield. And then defensively, we are still solid. Let's see what we can do. Season number four, the fourth and final season. If we don't make the playoffs with this squad, dude, I will be very upset. Three and four? Uh, what do you mean? What do you mean three and four? We're such a good team. 91 overall, 93 offense, 95 defense. Got some stars and some studs. Got some, uh... We, we just don't win games, dude. We're not out of it. But we need to essentially win out. Four and four. Show me five and four. Oh, five and four. Six and four. The dream is alive. Show me seven and four over the Raiders. Seven and four. Four and seven Browns. Get out the way. Oh my God. Eight and four. We are top of the AFC West. The dream is alive. Can we beat the three and nine Eagles? I sure hope so. Eight and five. We lost. Oh, that's so brutal. 29-12. Since we lost to the three win Eagles, this is the biggest game of the year the afc west is killer right now and we play the eight and five chargers at home tell me we can do it because next week over the bills has got to be a win nine and five got the lead or the uh division lead come on let's beat the bills 10 wins 10 and 5 and of course this win over the chiefs could be pretty big Week 17. This is a huge game. Time to upgrade players for the wild card. We got a first round bye. We beat the Chiefs 28 to 3. I see you in the top left. Let's go, baby. First round bye. 11 and 5 from 4 and 4. I'll show the schedule because sometimes people go, oh, you forced wins. Of course I did. No, I didn't. Um, as you can see here, forced wins, none except for the bye. Four, week four by sucks. But, of course, no force wins. We basically won out. We lost one game, and we shouldn't have lost. It was the, the three-win Eagles. Well, I mean, I guess you could say you shouldn't have lost. It's kind of weird because anything can happen on any given Sunday, as they say. But Benjamin West, his worst season. His worst season so far, but pretty good. Not that bad. Philip Lindsay still trash for some reason. He's been great in the NFL so far. Damian Strait, all right season. Receiving, no 1,000-yard guys, but Cortland Sutton had 10 TDs. Blocking, offensive line was all right. Defensively, Matt Milano had a pretty good season. 10 tackles for loss, but Michael Pierce led with 13. Von Miller, 17 and a half sacks. Bradley Chubb had 10 and a half. Interceptions, four for Roby, three for Harris, and a Wouzier, like that. Force fumbles, two for Von Miller, and at least one defensive touchdown. Chris Harris Jr. We've actually got a lot of defensive touchdowns this year. But here we go. Kareem Hunt, MVP. Saquon at number two. Any Broncos in there? No. AFC Offensive Player of the Year is Kareem Hunt. No Broncos. Defensive Player of the Year is CJ Mosley. No Broncos. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Demarcus Tarpley. Let's see, one Bronco. It's Morris Blake. Couldn't tell you who that is. Defensive Rookie of the Year is Sir Darius Reynolds. And no Broncos, but we didn't really have a draft. So that's not shocking at all. But we got to upgrade Joel Batonio. 95 offense, 97 defense. Sua Cravens has turned into a monster. He'll be a 96 overall, likely. And that is just wild to see because we almost got rid of him. And now he's one of the highest overall players on the team. He passed guys like Justin Simmons, passed Joel Batonio, who we acquired. It's crazy. But we have a divisional round of the playoffs facing the 9-7 and seven Baltimore Ravens led by Lamar Jackson. Can we beat them? We're way better, so probably not. Ravens are up 24-10. Always playing the comeback game. I like it. You guys uh, might remember the Ravens-Broncos AFC Championship a few years ago. That was a pretty great game. My guy, Champ Bailey, 
I don't think he let up a touchdown on the season. In that game, he kind of got torched. His age showing, but we're taking a shot deep. Look at the size mismatch in Jake Butt. I thought that would have been Gronk, but Jake Butt goes up and gets it. Talk about a quick strike. And we're back on offense. That was quick. We have straight in the game. He's a power back. We just got to hope that our defensive, uh, or excuse me, our offensive line overpowers their defensive line. And it looks like they have. Look at the hole opened up. Straight goes straight through it. If hey, that's a blitz, I'm going to be a little bit annoyed. If they're sending five, which they are, that's open in the flat, though. Cut up field. Straight power. Down at the one. Look at this stack box. I'm pretty sure we could pass on it, but I'm trying to run the ball. Look at the power of straight. Get out of the way. He's coming straight through. How many, how many awful puns can I make? It's going to be 31-31. We had to step in. And you guys know I'm not a great kicker. But we have tied it up. It's hard to know what's going to be great when, like, this is my only experience really playing the game other than Giants franchise. I wanted to go Gronk there. I want. I just got to check down. Third and seven. Philip Lindsay fights for the first down. Great work. This is such a stack box, but why wouldn't it be? We have one receiver on the field. We just need good blocking. We got it. Straight has the touchdown. No, he, he didn't. Why? What the? What was that animation? Almost better this way, to be honest, because we get to take more time off the clock. But still, a little bit weird. Handoff goes back to straight. He's going to walk into the end zone. You guys like that little move? <laughs> Very unnecessary. But we had a touchdown. We have the lead. We have a minute to hold on. I'm hopping in. We are sending a little bit of pressure and hope we just man up. We're on the running back. Boom! Game over, baby! Ending it with emphasis. Almost just put, put the, uh, the Josh emphasis thing there from Drake and Josh. You guys know that show? It's a pretty good one. Anyway, yeah, that's, that's quite a way to end. We've beaten the Ravens here in the divisional. On to the conference championship. I have the Colts. At mile high. Here we go. Oh, I almost just simulated. Oh, they're an 88 overall. Not bad, Indy. Quite a game so far. 13 to 3. And it looks like our defense is not stopping anything. But we, yeah, we stopped them. All right. Time to get back in this one. Only down by 10. This is very doable. Gronk wide open. Throws on the money. Great downfield blocking by Cortland Sutton. And Gronk's going to shake off a tackler. More so went right through him than a shake off. But the result is the same. West going to run. And he fumbles the ball at the one. Rats. Colts got a pretty good coach. And a Frank the third. And, um... Just need to step up and shut it down. Safety. There we go. 13-5. Interesting score. All right, it's fourth and five. It'd be crazy to run the ball here, but I'm going to. It's just so open. And Philip Lindsay has a lot of space. Risky play call, and it pays off. Oh, Lindsay, get there. Down at the one. That's a two-minute warning. I wanted to score before then, but couldn't quite manage it. And that's going to be a touchdown by straight. Two-point conversion to tie. Let's get it. We're going to try to run the ball again. Straight's just too much of a powerhouse. And he gets shut down. Wow. Ran right into... Who's that? Ndamukong Sue. Brutal. We have three timeouts, though. Not the worst thing. That's a problem. That's a problem. Uh, that's a problem. You don't... Uh, you hate that. That's open. Please hit the throw. Thank you. Devontae Parker. That's going to help us save the game. We got to score, uh, I don't know, 30 seconds ago. Uh, I'm going to have to settle for a field goal here. It's uh, it's our best shot. I don't know why it was making me watch replays because I was wasting a lot of time. And my left stick just like spasmed. I'm going to miss this. Oh, Luckily, you've made it. We need to get an onside kick. That run by Tariq Cohen really hurt. But we have three timeouts, so... 
We needed two squares anyway. Oh, okay. Are they going for it on fourth down here? Why? There's absolutely no reason to on fourth and nine. I mean, this is our best shot, but they run the ball. It gives us better field positioning, if anything. You almost got it, to be fair, but... This gives us our best shot. Oh, and I get sacked, and that's the game. Nothing got open, and of course, now we have to watch highlights as the clock expires. Because we won't have the time to get back to the line. <laughs> uh, classic, classic Bengal video, honestly. Making the playoffs. Having to jump in. Not clutching up. Benjamin West played very badly. I tried. I don't know. That's going to do it for the video. It was really fun watching guys like Cortland Sutton develop, but more specifically on the defense side of the ball, Suwa Craven's career has really been turned around. Justin Simmons developed well. Everyone developed well, but he really shot up to a 96. Larry Ogunjobi also turned into a beast, and of course, the duo of Bradley Chubb and Von Miller was electric in the 4-3. But that's going to do it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys are enjoying the 25 days of rebuilds. Hopefully, I'm able to do them all. 25 is so much, and these take a little while to do. But uh, I'm going to give it my best shot. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy. Make sure to use code BANGLE at sign up on FanDuel for a $20 deposit bonus, and check out my second channel for other games coming up like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Call of Duty Black Ops 4, as well as my third channel with collaborations with some of your favorite YouTubers. Let's get into the video.